Hi, my name is Nora Jost. I'm a cyclical Cushing's disease survivor. Friendly reminder that I am not a medical professional. If that's what you're looking for, you have come to the wrong place. Um, today we're going to talk about tapering off of steroids post-surgery. So, basically, you're on this steroid post-surgery because you're trying to raise your cortisol levels. Because a lot of the times, when they take out this tumor that's in your pituitary or it's in your adrenal or ectopic, and they take it out, um, your body's not making cortisol on its own. So you're, you don't have any. So you need to be on this medication until your body starts making normal levels. So how would you know? So you get tested at least once a month. At least once a month, guys. At least. If your doctor isn't testing you post-surgery at least once a month, there's a problem. Really, truly, needs to be at least once a month. So what you do is usually you have a morning and an afternoon dose. Okay? You take your morning dose, you know, take the afternoon dose, and then you get your blood work done at 8 a.m. And then you take your morning dose again after blood work. And that's how you know where your levels are kind of at. So your morning dose is usually around 9 or 10, and then your afternoon dose is usually around 2 or 3. If you take it much later than that, it can cause insomnia, because again, it's raising your cortisol. Um, so you don't want to take it too late and end up not being able to sleep, and you're like, why am I not sleeping? And it's simply because you took it at 5 instead of 3, you know? I started out at 30 milligrams of hydrocortisone, because my pituitary was seemingly awake. My levels never crashed below 5, right? Below 3 or 5 is usually considered a crash. Um, I'm at six now, and that's the lowest I've been. I need some water, you guys. Oh, I'm really thirsty. Okay, you feel better? Do you feel better? I'm glad we can all feel better. So, the first time, you, you, you want to taper by 2.5, right? So there are some doctors who are like, taper by 5. I don't recommend it, honestly, um, because you go through withdrawal. And some people say it's even worse than withdrawing from heroin. Like, why would you put yourself through that? Why would you make it worse for yourself? Um, and there's no reason to, to go off of it too fast. Again, you don't want to be on it forever. So I'm about four months and I'm almost completely off. There are some people who are on it for a year or two years. There's no shame. It's about when your pituitary woke wakes up. Um, I have a previous video about ketoconazole and hydrocortisone where I explain what they are and what waking up is and why mine is awake. So uh, if you're interested in understanding what that means, please check out that video. Um, with the hydrocortisone, um, you taper by 2.5 every time. So what you do is you start by getting your afternoon dose down to about 10, right? So it's like 20 to 10, whatever. Some people start with 30 etc. And you go down by 2.5. Then what you're going to do is kind of go down back and forth between your uh, afternoon dose and your morning dose. So again, my first tapers were six weeks apart. So I started out at 30, 20 in the morning, 10 in the afternoon. So then I went down, I went 20 in the morning, 7.5 in the afternoon. And then it was 18.5 in the morning, 7.5 in the afternoon. Every six weeks. Uh, once my lab results had come back normal for two months, two months, because some people are like, go for it away if your level is normal, two months with my levels in normal range, not crashing, that's when I started to taper completely off the medication, which means what? I went down 2.5 every time, every week. So every Wednesday, we called it taper day in my house, I would go down 2.5. Um, and so it was... 2.5 in the afternoon, 2.5 in the morning, 2.5 in the afternoon, 2.5 in the morning. Really going back and forth, etc. Um, so what did I experience? Every single time I tapered, I got my period again. And it was weekly. So I get my period for five days, have like a two-day reprieve, bam, period again. How come? It's very logical. You didn't get it because your cortisol was high, you're lowering your cortisol, you're getting your period. Then I would experience fatigue, insomnia, muscle pain. I never experienced nausea or vomiting. If you experience that, you're too low. Your dose is too low. You need to stop tapering and go back up to the one before. Some people find it helpful to do kind of a two-week taper. And what they do instead of going like just going down the 2.5 is they do like, let's say I'm going from 10 to 7.5, right? So on Wednesday was my taper day. So Wednesday I do 7.5, Thursday I do 10. Friday I do 7.5, Saturday I do 10. And then Sunday 7.5, Monday 7.5, Tuesday 7.5, Wednesday 7.5, and then like continue with that for like a little bit longer, make sure you're settled, and then continue down. I'm currently at 7.5 milligrams in the morning only, um, but my cortisol is at a 6. So what does that mean? 8 is kind of low, 
and mine's a little bit lower than low. So I'm staying at 7.5 until I can confirm with my doctor that he feels it's safe and I'm in a safe place to go completely off the steroids. So I have three weeks left, right? Because 2.5 to 7.5. So yeah, my next one would be going from 7.5 to 5, and then 5 to 2.5, and then 2.5 to 0. So I'm not feeling totally safe doing that yet. I'm staying at 7.5 until I'm in a spot where that's more comfortable. My cortisol is just a little bit higher and I'm in a little bit of a safer space. Um, because my cortisol before that was around like 15 and now it's at 6. Again, cortisol fluctuates, but I just want to make sure that I'm safe and that I'm able to taper in a safe way. Um, because what can happen, the biggest thing, and I've talked about this in past videos, is that you can go into a, uh, an adrenal crisis. Um, and that can be life-threatening. So, uh, you know, signs of that are basically an adrenal crisis is when your cortisol is too low. So the biggest signs are nausea, vomiting, like the shakes, shivers, things like that you want to go to the hospital for. Like, and I always say it's better safe than sorry. But let me remind you guys, I'm not getting paid to do any of this. I'm doing it for you. The more subscribers I get, the more I can, like, work with us and like try to help you guys more and like really just help people get diagnosed. So um, if you'll subscribe below, share the links, that would be really fantastic.